Welcome to part four of our epic series where we are taking a simple varmint rifle, the Savage 12 FV, and we are tricking it out to be a real long range monster of a rifle. We want this to be a precision rifle we can use in a bunch of different ways uh, for maybe some medium to long range hunting. And then we're going to test this at a mile, just be able to hit a large steel gong out at a mile. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor rifle. We've talked about its specs, but what we're gonna talk about now is the number one part that I would swap out on any of these kind of simple entry-level varmint or tactical style rifles and that's going to be the stock. This is of course not the stock that came on it. This is a Boyd's At One and we're going to discuss why we went with this stock. But the, uh, the, the one that's going to come on most of your rifles is going to look a lot like this. This is going to be on your Tikas and your Rugers and all kinds of things. Uh, this is going to be a very common stock shape. It doesn't look much different from anything that you're going to have on your hunting style rifles. And that can be a real problem with a rifle that's set up like this with a big heavy barrel. We'll delve into that here in a second. I'm Kyle Broderick. Welcome to The Social Regressive. Uh, I want to thank, first of all, the people that are making this possible. Thank you, patrons of the Destructive Arts, Peter, and the Sportsman's Guide at the 300 Win Mag and the 338 Lapua Magnum levels. And uh, yeah, thank you to all the, the various folks that might have donated some of the gear that's on here. Uh, the, the Patreon supporters bought everything else. If anybody else wants to chip in a buck or two a month to keep videos like this coming, I'll put the link to Patreon down here. So now let's jump in and let's talk about the deficiencies of these plastic stocks that come on modern rifles. There are actually some really good things about these. First off, they are going to be ambidextrous. You can see just by looking on a kind of top level here, there's nothing cast off, set off to one side uh, versus one of the, the other sides. So this is going to be a righty or a lefty stock. You know, usually with a stock like this, if, you, if they make a lefty model, like Savage usually does, they just they make a cutout on the other side, and there you have the, uh, the lefty model. Easy to work with. And actually some of these newer ones, they have a pretty decent forearm swell, you can see right here. And some of them are gonna have a little bit of palm swell through the grip right here. This one does not. This is a very simple, thin grip. And one of the biggest reasons well, there are going to be a couple of reasons why you want to swap out one of these plastic stocks. The first one is going to be the construction itself, what this is made of. In general, these are not going to be particularly taut. These are not going to be uh, uh, very strong. So when you place them on a bipod, which is of course what we're going to do with a big heavy rifle like this, this is not one that we're going to you know, shoot offhand with at least not very often. I've had to do it a couple times out varminting just because that's the only shot I could get. And I'll tell you that that was at close range. That was like 75 yards. I didn't want to take a, a standing shot any further than that. But yeah, for the most part, we're gonna be shooting these prone off a bag, off a rest, something like that. And in a lot of cases with a plastic stock like this, upward pressure is going to cause some kind of, it's, it's just gonna flex through here. Something is going to shift and it can throw off not just your point of aim a little bit, sometimes it can actually just open up those groups overall. The worst example of this is the old Stevens 200 that I had. The original plastic stock that came on that one would actually open up groups. All of a sudden it would shoot you know, like a half inch group at 100 yards, and then suddenly it would open it up to six inches or a foot. Uh, just with no warning at all and it all came down to the stock once I swapped it everything was great and uh, In some ways that's actually the rifle that I turned into that axis project rifle. I actually swapped the barrel over to that Some of the other deficiencies in a stock like this it it's going to come down to comfort the First off the comb is going to be very low on these the the cheek piece right here if if you're actually looking through a scope, you can see that this one's mounted a little bit high. I am going to reduce it a bit, but even mounted as low as it can go down on top of that receiver, I'm going to have more of a chin weld on this comb right here than a good cheek weld. I want it to sit nice and flush against this side of my face, push just a little bit up into my cheekbone right here. That's my ideal sort of setup. And this is going to probably sit just right down here. Not very good for repeatability if I need to get back on a quick shot, and just not very comfortable overall. It's not very stable. 
the biggest reason why I think that you might want to swap this stock, because actually the Savage 12 FV in this case, this stock is actually quite nice. It, it, I'm not sure if it has fiberglass running through it or what, but they have done some work to reinforce this stock and it does not feel very flexible at all. Uh, this feels very rigid and I think they would actually do a great job. In here, this is actually steel pillar bedded so you should get good accuracy out of it as well. Um, I really think that this stock, as far as accuracy goes, is going to work just fine. Maybe not with all the rifles that you guys have. Uh, you'll have to kind of hear your, your own mileage on these. Go out and check the forums and see what people think of their original stocks. But the biggest reason to swap this out is gonna be this grip right here. If you are down in the prone position, this is going to be a, a torture device. I've mentioned this a couple of different times when talking about different rifles that are set up for prone. If you have a hunter style grip that's designed to be shot offhand where you're kind of leaning into a rifle, yeah, this is very comfortable for that. It works just fine, nice and slim. But then if you are down on the ground trying to rest your elbow, it means that your wrist is at just a terrible, terrible angle. So we need to start looking at something else. Uh, the last issue that you guys might want to think about when you're swapping your stock is going to be the magazine. The magazine inside the 12FV is a blind magazine. It's a little four rounder, I believe, with your, uh, your 308 and your 6.5 Creedmoor. And this right here can be a bit of a pain in the neck when you're out doing certain styles of shooting. If you are just a target shooter, maybe that blind mag is going to work just fine. But uh, for the rest of us that maybe we're going to be shooting prairie dogs, we're going to be uh, maybe doing coyote hunting or something, where we need to be able to get rounds in there really quickly, one after the other, once you've tapped out that magazine, you're either single feeding really quickly or trying to jam rounds really quickly uh, down inside this magazine. Sometimes that doesn't work out well, as I know in my own testing. So we're gonna take a look at some stocks that can address all of these issues, beginning with the Boyd's At One right here. We are going to test two aftermarket stocks on this rifle, and you can see them both right here. First off, you guys are probably already familiar with the Boyd's At One, especially if you're subscribed to my channel already. I have done a full review on the Boyd's At One, and it is a wonderful stock, both for offhand shooting and for prone. Since this is going to be a prone rifle with its massive heavy barrel, uh, we are not going to be using those swept back hunter grips that you can swap out right here. We're going to stick with these vertical panels. The vertical panels you see right here are an extra expense. Go ahead and add these to your cart if you do buy an at one. Some of the other parts you can swap out are going to be the front, uh, the kind of forearm panel right here. You can get more of a beaver tail shape up here, a, kind of a semi beaver tail that flares out. Uh, very comfortable for offhand. If you're going prone, I don't know if it's gonna really matter much. The, uh, the, maybe you want that beaver tail for its wider base if you're gonna run off a bag or something, but this should do just fine if you're just running off a bipod. Moving a little further back, we have some adjustable parts. Uh, first off, we do have a push button swivel that's included, and that's pretty cool. And there's a socket for these on both sides of the stock. Pretty cool. Moving a little further back, here is the cheek piece. This has kind of a rubberized texture to it. Quite comfortable shooting outdoors in the sun and all that. Even though it's black, this one does not burn the face. I've been <laughs> quite fond of that. So you just push this button and you can drop it down, push it up. Uh, this does have quite a bit of extension, but one thing that I've noticed here, I had my scope mounted just a little too high. I had the wrong rings. I'm gonna bring these down to some lows, but I couldn't quite get optimal cheek weld and look through the scope at the same time. In this case, once I get the lows put on there, it's gonna be fine. At the very back, we have the adjustable uh, butt pad back here. This is gonna get you an extra one and a half inches of space and it has a very nice squishy rubber butt pad on the back that's not sticky or anything. It shouldn't really hang up on your clothing. Um, and it has kind of a, some rubberized or some kind of rounded edges back in here. Uh, so it does fit very neatly into the shoulder. This is straight up and down, but there are some extra pieces that we can work with from Boyd's. Uh, they do have an extended 
butt pad that you can get, and they also have an intermediate piece you can put in here that allows you to cant the butt pad to fit it a little better into your shoulder. And we're gonna take a look at that on the next stock down here. Now, if you do get a Boyd's At One, you have a couple of different options. Uh, first off, make sure that the barrel channel is going to be correct for you. Make sure that it's a varmint profile barrel channel cut in here. Make sure that if you are going to add bottom metal, that you get it inleted for that. If you want to stick with your original blind magazine, uh, just go ahead and leave it as is. And yeah, you, you will probably need to get that uh, an extra trigger guard here because the Savage 12 FV includes uh, some kind of funky trigger guards. Some of them have a little hook that won't actually go into this inlet right here. If you do get an at one, Go ahead and get the uh, the Boyd's trigger guard. I think you'll be very happy with how it works out. It can be kind of frustrating if you get the wrong one. The laminate color you see here is the Coyote laminate. I quite like this one. It's a little bit rakish, a little stylish, but it's still going to blend in pretty well if I'm out doing some varminting and I don't want the animals to really see my rifle all that well. This does have some camouflage to it. They have a bunch of different colors though. If you want your rifle to stand out, or if you want it to blend in, you have some forest camos and things like that, or you can get things that look like yellow jackets. Uh, you can make as crazy or as subdued a rifle as you want. Some other Boyd shapes that you might consider might be the thumb hole. This is one that's kind of a hybrid between offhand and prone. Uh, I think that it's not quite dedicated enough that you know, for a rifle like this, it's probably not going to work all that well. Some people like them, but uh, I think that it's probably not going to be exactly right. I would take a look instead at the Pro Varmint. That's one that it has a little bit of a lower comb, and you might want to go ahead and opt for the extra cheek riser that you can get on that. But it does have a very good vertical grip. It has a good shape overall and should be great for prone. The other stock that we'll be testing is this crazy looking one. This is one of the strangest looking stocks on the market. This is the GRS Bifrost. This is kind of the next evolution of their Berserk. Uh, the Berserk is a very excellent rifle stock that I've previously reviewed. I'll put a link to that review around here. It has all kinds of really neat trick parts, and it's obvious that they just kind of threw out everything that you know about a gun stock, went right back to what people actually need, and then put them all in one stock with some just nutty ideas. Take a look at this. First off, you have the grip. This is the most extreme part about the whole stock. You can see that it does not actually line up with the center axis of the stock. It's actually offset and it's at an angle. This is totally unique in the industry. There are some that will get some offset, but to be able to get both offset and cant in a grip uh, just straight from a factory or whatever, this is something that I have not seen anywhere else. You can see that you have some thumb grooves right here, a great big rubber panel for traction, and then you have this guide leading your finger all the way in to where the trigger is. You get a little bit of a shelf back here. You can run your thumb all the way around the back of the stock, and this is how I like it. If you want, you can put your thumb up against the side, but this is one that's very good for getting full control which is something that I really love when I'm out varminting. I want to be able to uh, really control the rifle, hold it much like a pistol, and uh, it just seems to work out a lot better for me. When you're at the range, it works out well to you know maybe ride your thumb along the side, but there are plenty of times where you're just in an uncomfortable position and you're trying to kind of maintain control over the gun, and it's nice to be able to kind of wrap a thumb around, get a good strong grip on it. Up front, the rifle comes with two QD sockets and one push button swivel that you can swap to whichever side you want. On the underside, you have a regular swivel stud right here, and the rifle actually comes with a little Picatinny panel that you can put on the side here, on the bottom, or on the other side. These little uh, black things that you see right here, these are little rubber sockets. These are protecting the threaded areas for that little Picatinny panel, and you can just pull these out if you want to swap these around. Adding to some of the interesting features of this rifle, right up front, you can see that there is a little black dot right here. You can also remove this, 
And this is going to accept a spigot for some of the Accuracy International or other uh, kind of highfalutin bipod adapters you can get out there. Uh, these are ones that are going to cant really well and they're going to sit a little bit higher up on the axis than you're typically going to get with a, a bipod that sits a little further back over here. Now this is also something that I'm speculating. Uh, after I pulled this little socket out, I could see through here that this is not all one piece. This rifle stock is actually in several pieces, and I suspect that this is for modularity. I think they're going to be able to swap out different parts in here, and we'll see uh, eventually why they might do that. But this is actually bolted together right back here. There's a, uh, there's a channel running all the way through here to bolt this uh, stock together. Let's take a look at the channel. The channel is quite large. This is going to work out just fine for our varmint barrel. There's plenty of room. You could probably get a full bull barrel in there without having to modify this in any way. The material that you see, this comes in two colors. You have tan and green, and this is a fiberglass reinforced polymer, and they say that this is actually more rigid while being lighter than the wonderful Berserk that I reviewed last year. You can see that there are some differences here in the, uh, the top inlet. Okay, here's where the recoil lug goes. This is, uh, right now they have this set up for uh, Tika, the Tika T3, and for Savage, the 12, the 16, uh, the 10, I guess. And you can see that right here, the holes drilled in here, instead of having any kind of steel pillars, it just goes right through the material. And right back here, there is no room to actually put steel pillars if you want to put these in later. However, they're saying that it is not necessary that this material is so rigid that it should be working just fine. You don't need to put in any pillars at all. And we're gonna put that to the test. We'll see how this does. So when might you want to choose one stock over the other? Let's talk about price first. The one at the back, the Boyd's At One, costs 190 bucks, which makes it a steal in the market. This, for the base model, with whatever inlet you want, and with those adjustable parts at the back, $190 and some odd cents. It really is an amazing price for an amazing piece of hardware. By contrast, the GRS up front costs probably about, I think it's about $750 for this stock, as you see it right here. And this is going to have all the bells and whistles already applied. Now, if you do want to trick out the Boyd's at one so that it includes the canting butt pad or some extra uh, space at the back if you want to get a little bit longer length of pull then you can probably get that up to uh, probably about 350 bucks for those parts to include right there and then you have you know the the 12 bucks or whatever for the vertical panels you see uh, hanging out uh, right back there so yeah this one does come a bit more you know squared away with some of those extra bits just right out of the out of the box and then the at one, you might have to add a couple things if you just want to get that extreme edge of performance. Um, but yeah, there is a pretty good gap in price there. As far as weight goes, the GRS is going to weigh less. Uh, laminate, while it is very rigid and very pretty, is also a little bit on the heavy side. I have spent lots of time with both rifle stocks and I have come to love both of them. If I can make a clear distinction between the two, the Boyd's at one is going to be the better bargain and it's going to have all kinds of zany colors that you can choose to personalize yourself. While the GRS is going to be the most comfortable stock that you can buy. I have not tested anything else that feels this good. And here's where I should throw in a note from MRAD out in Ireland, uh, MRAD Outdoors. He thought the Berserk had just a little bit of a, too large of a grip, too big of a swell uh, for folks with a little bit smaller hands. And I can second that. I have rather large hands myself, so this feels excellent for me. But there might be some of you, if you do have smaller hands, uh, maybe you want to go for the Boyd's instead. It has a little bit of a, a thinner grip back there. Whereas this one, even with the spacing between the fingers right here, this is set up for somebody that maybe has a little bit larger hands. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you do swap one part on your rifle, I recommend that you do the stock. This is going to pay big dividends in the end. You're going to get more accuracy out of your rifle. 
you're going to get more flexibility with the magazines, and then mostly you're gonna get better comfort back here, and that is going to, uh, it's really gonna pay off big time, especially as you're spending more and more time out at the range or out in the field. Having that vertical grip, having that higher cheek piece or an adjustable cheek piece, getting the right length of pull, it really makes a huge difference in how comfortable you are taking that shot and, you know, for example, you might actually end up kind of shaking if things are getting uh, worn out or tired, like my wrists would get out uh, prairie dog hunting. A better stock is going to make things work much better overall. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Make sure you uh, hit the like button, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I will see you around in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.